attempted to thump him on principle. Oh, Sam. If I'd have known what he was talking about, I'd have flattened him into the carpet. No, look, you can't blame him. What? I think Tracy's the first woman he's ever loved. <laughs> well, he's as shocked by all this as I am. More shocked. You, you could see what he was like. What he needs is a good hiding. That would shock him, all right. I expect he can't wait to tell the world. Look, you've done nothing to be ashamed of. You were 16 years old. And tell the world about us, too. If he starts any of that, then I will thump him. Doesn't look very good, Sam. I gave away my baby, and now I'm stealing another woman's husband. Nothing to be proud of. Well, not exactly proud, but you do lead an interesting life. I didn't think I was stolen. I didn't think I was worth stealing. How old did you say Tracy was? 21. And all this came out today? Mm. 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it, after 21 years? I'm sorry you had to be involved. I'm not involved. I'm just here. And thank goodness I was. Yes. Oh, Lord, I'm tired. Do you want me to go? No. It's quite a moment. The daughter you thought you'd lost, now you've got her back. <laughs> Hardly. I mean, she's not mine anymore. Or anyone else's at 21. The important thing is, do you like what you found? Yes. Yes, her, her parents should be proud of her. Then be proud and privileged. You've seen something you weren't supposed to see, how it turned out. And it turned out fine. Thanks, Sam. It's a great story. You wouldn't dare. Where have you been? Think. Danny, you promised. I promised I wouldn't make a scene in the motel. I didn't. I told her what I think of her in private. Well, nearly private. That uh, Benson character was there. Another of her little secrets. Why couldn't you just leave it? I didn't want to leave it. I wanted to make her squirm. You really are horrible. I know. Only just notice. Look, Danny, this is my problem. I don't know what you're getting so wound up about. It won't make any difference to us. You said it wouldn't make any difference to us. I know what I said. Well, then? You don't understand. Everything I've wanted, everything I've ever tried to do, she has got in the way. Apart from Joe, you are the only person I've ever felt close to. And I'm your stepsister. Terrific. It's just a word. There's no blood tie. I know. I'd like to go to bed now. What? I'm tired. I've had a shock. We've all had a shock. I want to go to bed. All right. Good night, Danny. See you in the morning. Anything interesting? Yeah, it could be. Just up some few. Oh, how's it? The phone bill. We've never really sorted out how we was going to pay for that. And an air mail. It must be from Diane. I think over the months she must have accumulated details of more properties than the doomsday book. How is she? <sighs> so she straightened Nicky out. Why? Was she crooked? <laughs> well, she's put on half a stone. Devil's food, cake, syrup, waffles, and fudge brownies. Oh, dear. They never seem to grow up, the Americans, do they? And she's coming back on the 20th. The 20th? That's the week after next. Mm. You know what that means, don't you? Here we go again. <sighs> Jolly lucky it was a light moment for weekend breaks. It usually is. November in Solihull never did really catch on with the public imagination. Thank you. Oh, I know. Still lucky all the same. I doubt if we could have managed with both you and Jill away. It wasn't my fault that the London office wanted me up there. No, oh, I know that, Adam. For whatever reasons of their own. How was it, anyway? Sir William showed me the video of the Crescent Moon. It's a massive complex, you know. Have you any idea how much it's costing? Oh, I've got the figure somewhere or other. It's not a very good idea, in my opinion. I mean, it's, it's not a very stable area. Mm. <laughs> you know that they are making it the employee of the month prize in December, don't oh. you? 
A week for two. Yeah, I've got the memo here somewhere. Whose turn is it this time? Ours, unfortunately. Those things are a pain. Oh, improves efficiency like nothing else. Yeah, also improves sycophancy, rivalry and tittle-tattle. Bit of healthy competition, Nicola. Mm. I'm tempted to put Darby for it again. He needs a holiday. I think that's hardly fair. No, maybe not. All right, then, you'd better get on with the official side of things, making it public. Competition open to all hotels in the group, etc., etc., etc. I understand I missed all the excitement while I was away. Hmm? What? Tracy's 21st. Oh, yes, that. Is there something else? They turned Roy Lambert down for the traineeship. Oh, that's too bad. Yes. Now then, shall we get on? Yeah. in, you see. You have to go to the dentist. Oh, dear. Yeah, an abscess. Oh. Uh, well, um, the show house is a Chalgrave, of course. Um, that's a little more expensive than the Montrose, but then it is the largest of the executive type, mm. with the um, end-suite bathroom, double integral garage, and utility. Oh, goodness. <laughs> is that the only difference? Um, well, substantially. Then why is this £7,000 more? Um, well, it's the extra land, really. The Montrose is very good value. Oh, no, I like this one, the Chalgrove. Look, come and have a look, Stephen, look. The last Chalgrove has just been finished, so uh, you could move in quite quickly. Have you got one to sell? No, no, not at all. Oh, good. Well, things could move quite quickly, then. Um, the last Chalgrove is just up here on the right. Oh. And it's identical in layout to the show house. Oh, good. Right, well, I'll leave you two to wander around on your own, then. Just give us a shout if you want anything. I'll be back in the office. I'm surprised you haven't got a Cromwell. A Cromwell? He wasn't a Cavalier, was he? Thought he was one of the other lot. Yes, well, we'll, uh, we'll give you a call if you need some help. Right. Thank you. Haven't they got funny names? And Montrose was the King's General in Scotland, and Chalgrove Fields was a Royalist victory. Shall we go? Where? Home. Oh, I think we ought to have another look first, don't you? You're not serious. What are they for? Well, it's a big decision, isn't it? Still, if you don't want to have another look, we'll just say we'll take this one, shall we? You must be joking. Well, Stephen, you didn't want the Montrose, did you? I don't want any of them, as you know perfectly well. I'm not a cavalier, nor am I an executive. So it follows that I don't want an executive house in Cavalier Spinney, whether it's a Shalgrove, a Montrose, or a Rupert of the Rhine. They got one of those. Kath, the plaster isn't even dry on the walls. The garden's in a salt course. The road's like a lunar landscape. Oh, Steve, don't exaggerate. They're raw. They haven't any character, any history apart from their name. Chalgrove Fields, where John Hampton died. He was the architect of Parliament's cause. Now they've named an executive house and ensuite bathroom after the place where he died. Yes, well, I like it. Nice and bright and modern. I like the garden, too. It'd be easy to manage. You can't live here, Kath. Where am I going to put the piano? I've always wanted an ensuite bathroom and a nice modern kitchen. Then we'll get an older house and put one in, if that's what you want. No, we won't. Kathy. Look, Stephen, you've found fault, haven't you, with every house we've looked at. All right. Well, I've stuck it for four months, but no longer. All right, it's not perfect, but at least it's, it's modern and clean, isn't it? And there's no chain. And we're cash buyers. And they said in the office that if, if we did our own legal work, we'd be through in two or three weeks. Well, that would suit us fine, wouldn't it? Is it really what you want? Oh, you know it is. You've known all along. Why do you have to keep play acting? Sorry. I forgot to mention, there's a special offer on the Chalgrove. The price is going to go up next month, so uh, if you're still interested. Well, Stephen, 
Well, the child grows fine, Miss Jessup. We like the child grove. Nice house, nice name, nice connections. Oh, Stephen. We'll take it. Oh. Oh, uh, this one sounds good. Mini 1000, excellent throughout. Very clean car, low mileage. Owners going abroad. 800 pounds or nearest offer. They're very good minis, you know. Right image. Well, the place is all right anyway. Service house. I've just come with some rather interesting news. Oh? The employee of the month Christmas prize is a holiday for two at the famous Crescent Moon. What's that? Don't you ever read the blurb, Dore? No. The house journal is for your benefit. The Crescent Moon, to put it mildly, is a hotel. Sourceless place. Yes, but not a 30 million pound holiday complex in the Persian Gulf where 90 in the shade is considered overcoat weather. Are you saying that the winner is going to get a trip abroad? Yes, Anne-Marie. <sighs> the winner and a friend. So all I'm asking you to do between now and Christmas is to be perfect. So what's going to change? I said perfect, not perfectly Perfect. awful, right? Good afternoon. May I help you? I see. Do you already have a booking with this Miss Bywater? Oh, is that about the Christmas party? Uh, excuse me one moment, please. Something about um, good companions. She said they do it every year. Yeah, yeah, it's the King's Oak over 60s. Mr. Chance used to deal with it. Uh, wh what does she want? Um, exactly what is the nature of your inquiry, Miss Bywater? I see. She wants to discuss the arrangements with you tomorrow. Um, okay, remember, four o'clock. Right. Miss Bywater, Mr. Chance is very busy tomorrow but I do know he particularly values your custom. So he'll be happy to discuss the arrangements with you personally if you'd like to come in at four o'clock. Not at all, Miss Bywater. I'm glad to have been of assistance. Goodbye. Very good telephone manner, Emery. Very good. You crawler. Don't get excited. I'm not going to bawl or yell. Just hear me out. About last night. I just want you to know that I have been thinking about what I said and maybe I did go a bit over the top. I don't suppose it's your fault. Entirely. How very gracious of you. No, it isn't. Don't get me wrong, Nicola, I'm not apologising. Then what are you doing? I don't know. Something's changed between Tracy and me. I'm, we're not related, there's no legal impediment. It's just not the same between us anymore. I'm sorry. And you're responsible for that because of what you did 21 years ago, giving no, no. her away like some unwanted present. Something not. you were lumbered with. A present from Bournemouth written all over it. Daniel, how can you be so cruel? <sighs> Look, what I'm trying to say is that you didn't set it up this stupid situation. I think we both agreed that it's that Hobbes man who should be hung by the thumbs. I just want you to know that that's what I'll be saying. Saying? What do you mean, saying? You're going to make this whole thing public? It is already, isn't it? Not the editor of the Botsit Gazette sharing your sofa. Oh, Sam's not going to print anything. Oh, no? Look, Daniel, at this moment, I'm less concerned with what you feel about me than what Tracy feels. Now, look, I mean, does she, does she want to... I don't know what she wants. She doesn't know what she wants. It's a mess. Yes, I know. Is that all right? Look, if I could... Turn the clock back. Yes. We all wish that, Nicola. Oh, Mr. Darby. Yes? Thought you might like this. What is it? Oh, heavens. Mickey chucked it out. It's got lots of stuff about the army in it. Any good to you? Yes. Thank him for me, will you? Yes, well, he chucked it out. I rescued it for you, for Remembrance Week. Well, in that case, thank you very much, Lorraine. My pleasure, Mr. Darby. Hello. Hi. Just come to tell you the score. And the score now is one all. Come again? Employee of the month. You can suck up to Mr. Chance, I can suck up to Darby. Mr. Darby? He's not even management. Ah, uh, he's better than that. If you want to score points, you can't beat the company spy. He's just the whole porter. Is he? Old friend of Herbie Freeman's. Been around since the Romans. Employee of the month every year since 1066. 
Who are you kidding? Well, it is very close to Mrs. Freeman. That's right. But the award will be made for effort, enthusiasm, and hard work, like it always is. <sighs> you have to believe in something in life. So, shall we try to start again? First of all, I'm sorry about yesterday. You couldn't help it. I was very clumsy. <sighs> Must have sounded to you as if I didn't want anyone to know that I had a daughter. But believe me, that is the last... <sighs> if you only knew how much I've thought about you over all these years and... I shouldn't have run out like that. I couldn't help it. I just thought... Well, you know what I thought. You thought I was ashamed of you, didn't you? Yeah, something like that. Silly, really, isn't it? No, it's not silly, but... It couldn't be further from the truth, Tracy. I, I want to know you. I'd like to help you and do things for you. I, I know we've got to take it slowly. You can't rush into things. You need time. Well, I do, too. So we'll... Just take it a stage at a time, little by little. All right by you? So where do we go from here? I don't know, really. Do you want to meet your grandmother? I know I she already got a grand. Yes, of course you have. Um, well, just for the moment, there's only one thing you've got to decide. Do you want to stay here? Because if you do, Tracy, we're going to tell everybody who you are. But you said yes. I know. I know what I said yesterday. But I was in a state of shock. But I've had time to think about it now, and well, I've been thinking about nothing else. For heaven's sake! I found my daughter. I don't I... know. What? Telling everybody all that stuff. I mean, I already got a gran, and I've got a mum. Yes, I know that, of I course. I can't go calling you, Mum. I'm not trying to be nasty, and I don't wish to be horrible. But I just can't do that. Can I? <laughs>